looking back now, what are the thoughts going through your mind? Uh, it's always a strange feeling coming back here. It's really clear still. I can just remember it so well. No wonder Salt Creek will always be seared in Lena's memory. What happened in this remote place in February last year to her and fellow backpacker Beatrice was horrific. But as Beatrice happily and innocently captured, it started out as a simple road trip, with Adelaide man Roman Hines giving them a lift. What was that drive like? He was quiet most of the time. I felt that he was worried uh, about us having a nice trip, you know, he was concerned. Like, oh, let's take some pictures. I know you guys are tourists. The girls were unaware of the menace Heinz kept hidden. On their way to the Great Ocean Road, he decided to pull into Salt Creek, a remote fishing destination he knew well. Most of the year, this is all filled with water. He took them to Tea Tree Crossing to set up camp. By now, Lena was worried. I remember that I asked Beatrice, like, do you think he's all right? And she was like, oh, he's a little bit weird, but I think it's going to be OK. Yeah, yeah. Masquerading as a mild and helpful fellow traveller, Hines soon had the camp ready. So after the camp was set up, what did you do, Lena? Uh, I was pretty tired on that day and I actually just wanted to sleep. So I went in the car, that's where I finally slept. And Beatrice and Roman, they were like setting up the stove and they were cooking something together and yeah, sitting on the table. Just like this is laid out now? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. all, in, all in this sort of space? Yeah. How did Roman Hines convince you to move away from the campsite? He convinced me that there were kangaroos in the back and he said that he saw some footprints. And he said, like, ah, would you like to go to see? And I said, yes, why not, you know? Hines's twisted plan was now in action. Trustingly, Beatrice followed him into the sand dunes, unaware he was carrying a knife, hammer and ropes. There were no kangaroos and Beatrice wanted to return, still unaware of the danger. Once I turned around to go towards the campsite, that's when she grabbed me. And then at the, at the beginning, like the first, I think, split of seconds, I just thought it was a joke. I just didn't get. Uh, and then I so said, like, no, it's no fun. What are you doing? Like, and then I realized that it wasn't a joke. You know, it wasn't. How had he grabbed you? He was uh, on my back and he put his arm around my neck and put me down. What did he do then? Um, then he, he grabbed a knife that he had on his back and he put on the sand. And then he got some pieces of ropes and tried to tie my arms and my legs, my ankles. But once I realized that he was trying to do, I grabbed the rope and throw them away. That's a, a great moment of defiance. Did yeah. he react in any way? He said to me, either you make it easy or I'm going to break your arm. So I said, OK, I'm not going to piss him off, I'm gonna just do it. It wasn't the right moment to piss him off. And I know this must be painful, but if you can, tell me what happens after that. What yeah. happens next? Then, like, he was in control of me, you know, in that moment, just, I couldn't do anything else, so he was turning me and he ripped my bikinis and Started like trying to kiss me and lick me, you know. And I understand he got he did get angry. I mean he 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 physically hurt you, 
to? What, what prompted that and what did he do? I was trying to talk with him and convince him that it wasn't a good thing. It didn't please him. So he started punching me like, shut up. You know, I don't want to hear what you have to say. And did that stop you? No, I was like, and it, it's weird, but I didn't feel pain at that moment with the punch, you know, because I had so much adrenaline inside of me that I, I just was focusing, like, what can I do to survive? Were you sure at that point that you would survive? No, it passed for like several moments in my mind that I was going to die. And I even imagined my mom coming there to see my body, like to, you know, that's the image that I had. But I didn't think about giving up at any moment. You know, I just thought it would be really unlikely for me to survive. I was in the middle of nowhere. He was there. I was tired. What could I do? Like nothing, nothing. He must have been terrified. Yeah, I felt like I was in a horror movie. You know the end. You don't need to watch till the end. You know what's going to happen. Beatrice's next move most likely saved her life. Incredibly, instead of fighting Roman, she tricked him, persuading him they could continue with whatever he wanted back in the comfort of the camp. I had to convince him that I was on his side, you know? So I said, like, you don't need to do this. If you want to do something, just ask me. We can go to the tent, we can relax there. You don't need to do this. And when we were going towards the camp, I felt good. But for some reason, when we were getting close to the camp, he, he felt that he changed his mind and he went towards the other direction. And at this moment, I thought, that's my final chance. Because if you go far away, I don't know what's going to happen. And that's when I screamed for Lena. I had just one chance. Lena! And that's it. And then he started punching me and he threw me on the sand. Lena! I heard the scream and I went around the car. And, and you knew what, that it was from this direction? Or no, it came from the left direction, definitely. That Lena heard her name above the wind and the waves was a miracle in itself. Now she had to find exactly where the single scream came from. I saw them. She was lying uh, in the sand dunes, naked, and Roman was standing over her. Like, oh my God, this can't be true. Then after the shock moment, I, yeah, I got really angry suddenly. I was like, what the hell does he think he is? Like, <laughs> he can't do this. And um, so I went in their direction and I shouted at him something like, like, leave her alone, get away from her, let her go. And he turned around to me and he said something really strange that I didn't get immediately in that moment. He said something like, um, I just wanted to try her. And then um, he was coming after me and I was, um, I was running back to the car because I knew I don't want to be close to this guy anymore. Like, I knew he, he was like planning on doing something, but I had no idea what exactly. And I was trying to warn her, you know, like he has an ax. I, I didn't know what was it. And I was like, just run away. He has an ax, a hammer. I just, I didn't know what was it. And like, she was there so brave trying to help me. And I just, no, run away, Lynn. Having to leave Beatrice bound, Lena races back to the car. She's desperate to get to her phone to call for help. I think I was even telling him, like, I just want to grab my bag and get out of here. He was like, yeah, get your fucking bag. So I opened the door to get the bag, which was here, and I tried to grab it, but 
didn't work out because he came from behind. And that's when I got the hard smash with the hammer. I was like, oh my god, that's it. I gonna he's gonna bury bury me in the sand or something. So I thought that's it pretty much. I didn't know what he had like hit me with because I couldn't see it immediately, but I thought that's the end because the the smash was so hard. Bleeding profusely, Lena is now fighting for her life as she tries to get the hammer off this six foot six enraged man. He manages to hit her three more times before she escapes him. He has a hammer and a knife. What do you think he was planning on doing? His intentions with those tools was to harm us, for sure. Yeah, like, after the hammer attack, it was clear. I was just thinking, oh, my God, he's just totally insane. Like, he wants to kill us. Yeah. Coming up, incredible courage. She saved me again at this moment. Whose idea was it to go separate ways? And an unbelievable chase. You're, I mean, look at you, you're little, and he's got this four-wheel drive and he's chasing you. How Lena outsmarted the madman. So I pretty much jumped on the bonnet. He was really angry. That's next on 60 Minutes. <laughs>